Portions of TV23's Internet provided by SWKO Wireless Internet. Covering the high plains with news, weather, and information. From TV23 Studios in Sublet, this is High Plains Today. And hi, everybody. Welcome to High Plains Today on TV23. It is Thursday, August 27th, 2015. And that means if it's Thursday on today's show, Larry Phillips, managing editor of The Leader in Times. Now let's take a look at some news. A TV reporter and cameraman were shot to death on live television Wednesday by their former colleague, a journalist who also recorded himself carrying out the killings and then posted the video on social media. Now the gunman, who was fired back in 2013 from WDBJ in Roanoke, Virginia, fled the scene and went online posting the video on Facebook and Twitter. Vester Lee Flanagan's video shows him approaching WDBJ reporter Allison Parker and cameraman Adam Ward, gun in hand, as they conduct an interview. He points the gun at Parker and then at Ward, but he waits patiently to shoot until he knows that Parker is on camera, so she will be gunned down on air. Now Flanagan later died at a hospital of self-inflicted gunshot wounds. That's a sad deal. And city manager Sharice Teban announced that Robert Hines has been appointed as the next fire chief for the Dodge City Fire Department. Effective December 21, 2015, when current chief Kevin Norton plans to retire. Hines has been serving in the capacity of deputy fire chief since 2011. Now, Hines joined the Dodge City Fire Department as a firefighter back in March of 1985. His promotions throughout the years included fire engineer, fire captain in 2000, and deputy fire chief in 2011. And employees of Garden City Community College will see a 3% raise this school year, which will cost the college about $117,000. Now, the teachers' union GC3 Educators approved the raise on August 14 as part of the college's employer-employee agreement for the 2015-16 and the 2016-17 school years. Now, the college's board of trustees approved the agreement and all parties signed it on Tuesday. And one of two men accused in the fatal shooting of a Garden City man on April 19th was bound over for trial Tuesday afternoon in Finney County District Court. A felony first-degree murder charge against 32-year-old Michael Eugene George Jr. was amended to premeditated first-degree murder, and the original felony murder charge remains as an alternative charge as ruled by Judge, District Judge Robert Frederick on Tuesday. Now, George, along with 33-year-old Jeffrey Ridgen, is charged with first-degree murder in the shooting death death of Carlton Wakter in the 100 block of Poplar Street at East Garden Village. A Kansas judge is allowing voters to continue pursuing a lawsuit challenging how Secretary of State Chris Kobach is enforcing a proof of citizenship requirement for registering to vote. But Shawnee County District Court Judge Franklin Thies isn't blocking Kobach from enforcing the requirement as he has for more than a year. Kobach told county election officials in June 2014 that the relative handful of people who use a federal form to register to vote are eligible to cast votes only in presidential, U.S. Senate, and congressional races, not state and local races. Kobach is the architect of the state's proof of citizenship law, which took effect in 2013 and requires people registering in Kansas for the first time or after living in another state to provide a birth certificate, passport, or other documentation of U.S. citizenship. The federal registration form requires only that people affirm that they are citizens without requiring additional papers. And Secretary of State Kobach fired back Tuesday against what he said was an attack on his office by Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. On Monday night, Clinton's campaign Twitter account criticized Kobach's proposed regulation allowing him to remove the names of more than 34,000 suspended voters from voter rolls. Now, she says purging 34,000 plus voters from Kansas elections is no administrative rule. It's a targeted attack on voting rights. Now, Clinton, in, when she tweeted that, also included a link to an Associated Press story. Now, Kobach, Kobach fired back with the following. Hillary Clinton attacked our office today on Twitter. 
She thinks it's an attack on voting to give registrants 90 days to complete their registrations by sending or emailing in proof of citizenship, which is more than more time than other states give. And what is the consequence of waiting more than 90 days? It's not being purged as the, quote, left-wing knuckleheads claim. It's just having to fill out the form again. Oh, the horror. Hillary is getting her pantsuit in a twist over nothing. I'm sure we haven't heard the last of that. And that's a look at just some of the things that are happening in the news. Stick around. We'll be back with a look at weather after this. You're watching High Plains Today on TV23 with host Chris Jewell. TV23's internet service and 4G live streaming provided by United Wireless. Coverage you deserve. Service you expect. United Wireless. You want to feel connected, informed, included, inspired. So when important things happen, we're here. Your local TV and radio broadcasters. America's number one source for news, weather, and information on every screen in your life. We are broadcasters, always here for you, wherever here may be. Text TV to 52886. Tell Washington local stations matter. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. time next week well of course put away a few bucks feel like a million bucks for free tips to help you save go to feed the pig now the local weather forecast for the high plains and welcome back as we look to the northeast off the tv 23 power cam you can see it's a nice day but guess what folks after yesterday, summer has returned for a few days. Looking at our current temperatures here at the station, 89 degrees. Relative humidity, though, not bad, 42%. Winds are out of the southwest at 13, and the barometric pressure is falling. Looking at our temperatures around, Perryton already at 92, Liberal at 90, Pratt is at 90, Hayes 94. Everybody is going to warm up a bunch today. And looking at the current dew points, this is the reason, though, you get up to the 90s and the dew points start falling down into the 60s and 50s. You get that big a gap, then the humidity is going to be down, which is a nice thing. Looking at our winds, though, they are going to pick up today. Everybody except out at Lamar is in the teens and 20s. As you can see, 21 in Perryton, 20 in Liberal, 21 in Garden City, everybody out of the south-southwest. Yesterday, according to the readings at the Garden City Regional Airport, the high was 97, the record 106 back in 2011, 63 overnight, 50 was the record back in 2010, and no rain in the bucket. Looking at our forecast, we are calling for 95 today. Yes, I said summer is back. Winds are going to be out of the southwest at about 20 miles an hour. There is a 30% chance of showers today. That's going to happen after 4 o'clock, maybe this afternoon. Looking at tonight, chance of shower still sticking around. Picks up a little bit. 
50 percent, 65 for the low. Now these showers should be done by the time the sun comes up tomorrow. Winds are going to shift around to the east at 14 tomorrow, 88 for the high. Winds are going to switch all the way around though out of the north at 14 and then tomorrow night winds are still going to be staying in the north but they'll be out of the northeast. 61 for the low. Looking at seven day you can see we've got that chance of rain in there. But summer is going to be back because we are going to stay pretty much in the upper 80s to lower 90s, lows in the 60s. That's a look at the weather. Markets are coming up. Hi, Chris Jewell, host of High Plains Today, a 30-minute news and information program that airs weekdays at noon right here on TV23. We talk about news, we talk about sports, we talk about weather, we're even going to talk entertainment. We'll have live guests right here on set with me. So, every day at noon, tune in High Plains Today. We'll see you then. Weekdays here on TV23. Same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. A boy born in Joplin, Missouri was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him going on to fascinate millions with his talent one in 260,000. 
The odds of this born racer having 157 career top 10 finishes in NASCAR? One in 125 billion. The odds of him winning both the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year? One in 195 million. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism? One in 88. I'm NASCAR driver Jamie McMurray, and my niece has autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. And welcome back. I'm now joined on set by our good friend Larry Phillips, managing editor of The Leader in Times and Liberal. How's your vacation? Oh, it's great. Mr. Florida guy. Yeah, I had to go down and get some new shirts. You know? There you go. There you go. <laughs> and in honor, I wore my striped socks in honor of your, your, your flashy shirts today. Yeah. Uh, what, do you, what do you know today? Well, you know, I keep watching this class warfare. Uh, to me, the Democrats love to say, we're going to help all you people in the middle class move up. Well, I haven't seen the middle class move up. You look at the stats, the middle class is worse off than they were 10 years ago. But anyway, I got to thinking about middle class. Where does this middle class come from? Why are we labeled middle class? Some of us make more money than me, or, you know, and I make more money. What? You know, what's the big deal? We're Americans. But I, got to, I Googled, it's really murky, I Googled why <laughs> middle class. I had 145 million results. <laughs> about middle class. In the modern world, it seems to have started back with Karl Marx. Now, if you go back into, you can go back in 1690s in the Britain Revolution, uh, uh, the American Revolution of 76. I don't think that was a class warfare thing. Uh, we didn't like getting taxed and having no representation, you know. I guess against the royal class. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to get away from the royal class. <laughs> And then, uh, of course, you had the uh, French Revolution in 1789. That's where all of the lower class murdered and annihilated all the aristocracy. You know, and that made that's them true. happy. That's They've true. They've never been the same since. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's France. I don't, don't even go there. But anyway, uh, Karl <laughs> Marx, I found a, a statement he made in his writings. He looked at the world, and he said, quote, The history of all hitherto existing society is the history of class struggles. So that's the way he saw the world and that's the way he saw civilization. And he, he used that to be a ruler, to be a leader. And, and actually, uh, Marx, Marx class was the essence of history and of human behavior. But now, you look at, the, you look at what Margaret Thatcher thinks and believes, what she wrote about middle class, class, uh, Margaret Thatcher said, where is it here? Oh, goodness. <laughs> she said, uh, Thatcher said, uh, class was, uh, I'm sorry, class is a communist concept. It groups people as bundles and sets them against one another. And of course, uh, Thatcher thought class had been the perversion of both. Uh, society and history. Okay, so her theory is she's just the opposite of Karl Marx then. Exactly. Okay. And Karl Marx predicted that in the future we'd be living in a classless society. The idea of socialist utopia where there was no class and no government. Well, he was wrong. Okay, and so before he came up with that theory, then it was basically before then, I'm thinking the haves and have-nots, wasn't it? It could have it 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 went back to the caveman guys. Who has the club? Yeah, and you who know? doesn't? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That okay. guy took my club. Well, he's the leader. <laughs> okay. So, and we were talking <laughs> about anyway, this. Go ahead. Well, we were talking a little bit about this before we went on the air, and it's 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 like okay, we have middle class, and you stay. You know, we have upper middle class. Well, they'll write. About we have lower middle class, and they write about the poor, but and they the don't poor. write about the the one percenters. I guess is the other group that everybody in the from the left and progressives want to attack and take from the one percenters to provide money for all these other groups. I, I believe that they don't care about the middle class except for to get votes. That's how you keep people. 
Look at poverty. Well, if you're the below majority. the middle class, would you want to move up into the middle class? It's the majority of the population. Well, I would think so. Yeah. Wouldn't you? Now, the poverty, extreme poverty, you can get your housing, your utilities, transportation, health, dental, you name it. And I've read, I've found the article or the stats. It comes up to thirty to forty thousand dollars a year in benefits. Now, who wants to move up out of that really? into the middle class? That's government benefits yes. that you can get for housing and medical Everything. and thing. Yes. Wow. Yeah, thirty to forty thousand dollars a year. Well, so that would bump them up into the middle class. Well, then they wouldn't be, it? Yeah, then they're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, because you know we talk about okay. Gonna... <laughs> so, so if you talk about the upper middle class, the middle class, the lower middle class, and once you get below the middle class, then are you talking about the poor? Yeah. I mean, is that Poverty. what you're going to label them? Poverty. Yeah, that's what they label them. But to me, I don't like the label. I don't like being called middle class. I find that insulting. I find it insulting to have hyphenated Americans. I don't believe there's. Uh, I agree with you on you know, that. I agree uh, with you Irish on that. Americans. Yes. Latin Americans, African Americans. I believe we're all Americans. You know, and to me, middle class, it's the same thing. Uh, they're throwing us into these groups to keep us divided, just like Margaret Thatcher. They bundle us. They group us, and they get us to fighting against each other because that gets them votes because they're going to promise to bring you out of that middle class and give you the good life, the good jobs, the good benefits. It's not happening. Well, it's a, yeah, it's a political thing. I mean, it's the old adage of the grass and, is always and, greener on the other side. don't get me wrong. Uh, the GOP is doing it too. They love to talk oh, about what sure. they're going to do for the middle class. They haven't done jack yet either, and they've took over the House, and then they took over the Senate, you know, and they're still just sitting there, wang, 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 wang. <laughs> yeah, they, sound, they all sound like Charlie Brown's mother, don't they? <laughs> wah, wah, exactly. wah, 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 wah. Yeah, the same leadership doing the same stuff, you know, and things got to change. But I get tired of middle class. I get tired of the class warfare, and I think everybody ought to rise up and say, you know, I've had enough of it. I'm an American. So somebody makes a little more than I do. I make a little more than some others. I give to my church. I give to Boy Scouts, 4-H. You know, I do what I can do. You know, what I want is less government restriction, less government schism between the groups and unite us, somebody to unite us all on the same track, you know. Who's and Reagan gonna... did that well. Well, but... okay, so looking at the 106 know. candidates that are out there now. <laughs> who do who do you think can unite us? Uh, that who's that, that who's our, <laughs> Yeah, who's okay. All right. So you don't think any of them can well, at this I don't point? Well, I really don't know. I know that some of the yeah we are done talking about that. Oh are no, we? no, we'll go along, especially after a few primaries. Yes, <laughs> when we start winnowing out some of the uh, pedestrians, I call them. But, I want you. Uh, okay, here, here. I'm going to give you homework. Okay. As as the elections come closer next year, yeah. keep track of how many of these candidates, even in the forums and stuff that are coming up in the press, you know, middle class, middle yeah. class, what they're going to on do both the sides, you know, because you got Hillary and well, and Biden's not sure, and right. and well, have you noticed, yeah, have you noticed Hillary? She's jumped up there, come home from vacation early. Uh, she cannot let Bernie outleft her. That's oh, true. She's really going after the middle <laughs> class to help them by taking it from the aristocracy. There you go. All right, or Larry. whatever group you want to call them. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for coming in today. I appreciate it. I'll see it. you again next week. Thank you. And we'll keep an eye on this middle oh, class I will. thing. I will. All right. Stick around. <laughs> Be back right after this. <laughs>
connected, informed, included, inspired. So when important things happen, we're here. Your local TV and radio broadcasters. America's number one source for news, weather, and information. On every screen in your life. We are broadcasters. Always here for you. Wherever here may be. Text TV to 52886. Tell Washington local stations matter. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. And let's take a look at a little bit of sports. Now, the Baltimore Orioles hit five home runs and snapped a six-game losing streak with an 8-5 to five victory over the Kansas City Royals last night. Game four in the series is tonight in Kansas City. And the Seattle Seahawks have cut rookie quarterback and former Wildcat quarterback Jake Waters. Now, Seattle signed Waters before their preseason game in Kansas City. But Waters didn't see any action in that game. Remember, Waters led K-State to the Alamo Bowl last season. And Montel Cozart will be under center for new Kansas coach David Beatty when the Jayhawks begin their season September 5th against South Dakota State. Beatty announced Monday that the junior had won the competition for starting quarterback. Cozart started three games as a freshman in 2013 and the first five games last season before Michael Cummings took over. But when Cummings sustained a season-ending left knee injury in the spring game, it appeared the job would be Cozart's to lose. And that's just a look at a little bit of sports. Hey, let's look at the weather. Hey, it's warming up. It is now 90 degrees. Relative humidity is of 41%. Winds are picking up a little bit. They are now out of the southwest at 16. Barometric pressure is falling. And remember, we do have a 40% or 30% chance of rain this afternoon after 4 o'clock. That will continue into until about 4 or 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. But summer temperatures are here to stay for the next seven days. Lows are going to be pretty much in the 60s. And what well, make it a good day. Hey, you want to see us on your local cable? Call your provider and say, I want to see TV 23. Go out and make it a good Thursday. See you tomorrow. up to date with the latest information from TV23 on our Facebook page, KDGL TV. Hi, I'm Chris Jewell, host of High Plains Today, a 30-minute news and information program that airs at noon weekdays right here on TV23. Hey, do you think you have an idea for something that would make a great segment? Somebody that would make a great interview? What about a community event that needs highlighting? Let us know here at the station. Email us, news at kdgltv.com.